This is Griff Ruby, the Nostalgia Catholic here. Um, I'd like to do my first review of a book. To be in here, we have a book. Um, and this is going to be Isaac Asimov's Foundation. Now, Foundation, of course, was considered one of the great science, science fiction classics. It won the Hugo Award back in 1966. And um, it was uh, pretty famous back in those days. Much of the science in it has become somewhat dated, and the technology very much dated. So, it, you know, it, it kind of, I can't say it's completely worn well. Parts of it hold up pretty well, but there's going to be the occasional stuff here, and that's going to be not everything it should be. But all the same, you know, it's one of the great classics of science fiction literature. And looking around, there don't seem to be a whole lot of very good reviews. Part of the reason is, is that it's not just this one book that you can go through and that was neat and okay it's got these neat things in it it's really like a whole corpus of books and just to kind of get an example of it if you were to go chronologically by the story account yeah, okay it would start with prelude to salvation in which we meet it with a very young Hari Selden as he first arrives at Tranter uh, I'll get into individual volumes later on in more detail. And then his later life is handled in Forward Foundation. And then the next thing we hear about sequentially, and I have to apologize for the state of this book. This actually is an omnibus volume, Wall 3 of the original Foundation, but. This little symbol would be on the first of the three volumes, at least the Avon editions that came out in the late 60s, early 70s. So this actually has the foundation. It also has, uh, covers a little out of sequence, foundation and empire. And then it also has second foundation. At least the contents are put in the right order. And I just kind of like to showcase some of that. Well, well, I know that's, a, I'll get to that in a so it'd be those three books. And then, after a very, very long hiatus, Isaac Asimov finally decided to write another volume of the Foundation series known as Foundation's Edge. And uh, it ends with its newest or last installment in terms of the story with Foundation and Earth. And I think, well, that's not too bad. So that's just you know, one, two, three, four, five, seven books. However, that's not the full story, because by the time you've gone through all of this, he's managed to tie in three more galactic novels that he had written in the early 50s, namely The Caves of Steel, the, um, no, not The Caves of Steel, well, I'll get to that, he ties to that too. Um, let's see, The Stars Like Dust, The Currents of Space, and Pebble in the Sky. Um... He also managed to tie in a small smattering of short stories, and perhaps I may get a chance to talk about some of those as well. But then uh, another thing he ties in is with the Elijah Bailey stories. Um, Elijah Bailey being this detective, and his robot counterpart or companion, Daniel Olival. And we have several of them. Caves of Steel was the first of that. Uh, followed by The Naked Sun, and then after a long hiatus, The Robots of Dawn, and finally Robots and Empire, which kind of begins to lead up to the Galactic Era. So you can still put all that in a chronology. It ties in a lot of the robot mythology, the, the original Susan Calvin stories, and, and some of the other, Turner's, well not Turner's, what's the other one, Lewis and Powell, I think, and some of the early, early robot stories in which the three laws of robotics that Eisenhower that Asimov came up with were introduced. Those laws being that a robot must first and foremost um, never harm a being or a human being or allow anything a human being to come to harm through inaction. The second law being that it must do what it's told to do by humans and the third law being it also tries to protect its own existence so that it can, you know, exist. So those were the three laws of robotics, and as long as robots are programmed with those around those three laws, they'll be safe and harmless. That was kind of the idea back then. People always had, you know, robots. Is remember when Asimov started writing about robots back in the 1940s? 
robots were a lot of clang clank and ah there are things man is not meant to know and all this kind of stuff that just okay so you know and asimov wanted to come up with a different you know, robots that were friendly that were helpful and you know even if they had some kind of a bad effect on society it wouldn't be because they're trying to be nefarious or take over or anything like that it's you know if anything it's the opposite they're just here to help so that gets tied in that whole robot lore so you, you get a whole bunch of different kinds of lore that that all get woven together um so it ends up being a lot more than just these seven volumes that are foundation proper if you really wanted to put it in sequence what you would have is the robots being first um, being developed. You've got Susan Calvin, of course, being a very important roboticist in a lot of his early robot stories. And then, um, and Three Laws. And then you get the um, Elijah Bailey and Daniel Olaval uh, stories, which now are set in a rather interesting time in history. Um, called the, uh, where there was a big division, the spacers, they call them. The idea is the Earth had colonized about you know, some, some worlds, and then the people living on those worlds didn't want to be colonies of Earth. They wanted to be their own countries and their own ways of doing things. And they were made up of all the best and the brightest, the most genetically perfect, and things had created some sort of longevity with these people. Um, and they were a heavily roboticized culture. And you kind of had to because you got all these different planets where things, especially when people arrived, were very, very rough. And you needed a lot of robot labor to make these planets inhabitable. So you, you have the societies out in space, they call them spacers, who are very accustomed to uh, robotic life, uh, having robots around and so forth with them, associating with robots, having dozens, in some cases, even thousands of robots personal servants so that becomes the spacer culture whereas contrarily the earth comes for some reason to despise robots they don't like them they don't trust them even when they've got the three laws it's like they're still afraid of clank clank and ah and all that kind of stuff or maybe whatever i don't know but the earth earth people don't seem to like the robots and their lives remain rather short the earth continues to be very overpopulated, life is hard here, and so forth. Well, eventually the, there's a whole tension. They can barely get along with each other, but for some reason his skills as a police officer kind of catch the attention of somebody in one of the main spacer worlds, and that's how Elijah Bailey meets up with uh, Daniel Olival, who is actually a robot clone of a very important figure who appears, you know, who, who is from Sirius, the main, you know, planet revolving the star Sirius, you know, one of the main spacer worlds of them all. So that gets that. And then, of course, you get further visits to the robot, to the spacer world, because he does such a great job, I guess. And he and Daniel kind of become friends. And then in the later books, he's gone, but Daniel Olivao still is seeing his descendants and seeing them. Because what happened was, there was this big colonization push that had created these original worlds, maybe about 48 or 49 of them or so. And then that rebelled and people kind of said, well, we don't really want to do that anymore. Um, it gets to be 50 because they managed to colonize one, one of the remaining one or two worlds, Solarius. Sol Solaris is the, the world there. And, and he actually goes to that world. That's the last of the worlds colonized under that whole colonization effort. But meanwhile, there's a whole second wave of colonization that starts in the days of Elijah's uh, son and grandson and grandchildren and so forth, where they start in moving back out into the galaxy, this time without the help of robot robots. So it's all just rugged individualism and so forth. And they are the ones who actually build this galactic empire that we're kind of starting to see by the last of the uh, uh, Elijah Bailey, Danny Olaval books, Robots and Empire. So then our next glimpse, of course, is those galactic era novels where the galaxy, much of the galaxy in one case and all of it in the other two cases, have pretty much come to be ruled by the first great galactic empire. And they're just interesting stories set in that situation. But then we get to the point of the foundation itself, wherein the galactic empire is on the brink of collapse. 
and you've got Hari Seldon, and he's going to be the one to rescue civilization by creating a second empire, and that's what that ends up being all about. So the, these seven foundation books would, in the storyline, come at the end of the sequence of this whole thing. Well, I think that's going to be just my general introduction to Isaac Asimov's foundation. So I think I will continue this in part two.